Greetings, fellow modelers and collectors, and welcome to another exciting episode of What's on the Workbench. I'm your host, Phil Lister, and in this episode, we're going to take a look at painting the bust of the thing from another world. Uh, this bust comes courtesy of Earthbound Studios. It was sculpted by Joe Simon. Uh, it, it came uh, as a very clean casting, which you would naturally expect from Earthbound Studios. And this bust was a little bit of a challenge in the sense, since I was using a flesh tone that was uh, not Caucasian flesh, as you can obviously see. Uh, the client wanted this in a pale green, and I think it was an excellent color choice, uh, but it was a challenge. And you'll see throughout the video what I'm talking about when I say it was a challenge. Uh, so without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here we are uh, with the actual bust itself, uh, the base and the hand that comes with it. And as you can see, uh, as far as um, the base goes, it's pretty much done. As far as the base is concerned, um, like I said, it's, it's actually pretty much done. Um, I was trying to decide if I wanted to come back with a very, very subtle uh, shade of a very pale powder blue for the shadow areas. And I haven't fully decided on that yet. I may do that. I may not. Um, the lettering is done. I'm going to have to go back and touch it up a little bit here on the bottom. But other than that, uh, the base is pretty much ready to roll. So here's the head. Um, as you can see, it does have primer on it. And so it's about ready to paint. Now, what I've done is uh, after discussing it with the client, uh, he wants the basic skin tone and a very pale green. So I've already uh, taken the liberty of mixing that up. And that's it's all been thinned down. And this is all ready to go, ready to airbrush. So I'm going to be using the Badger Anthem airbrush for this with the uh, color cup. So I've added the paint to the color cup, and uh, now I'm ready to begin the process of spraying the face. And just like any other color, you know, you want to make sure you get nice, even coverage. Now, what's helping this out, of course, is the fact that um, it has a gray undercoat. So it, even if some of the gray did show through, uh, ever so slightly, it's not really going to hurt anything in a case like this. Even if I was using a flesh color, it wouldn't really hurt anything either. Okay, so as you can see, um, I now have the base color flesh on the head as well as the hand. Uh, as a matter of fact, the hand is still somewhat wet at this point, because I just finished spraying it. So you can see there's a little bit of a shine there. Um, but it is uh, all painted with the, the basic flesh tone, uh, very light green. Now uh, will be the process by which I will airbrush over the veining, uh, all over the head on the sides here. There's some on the front of the face and on the other side. And I'm going to do those in a darker green. And if they're too prominent, then I'm going to come back with the base color and I'll fade them back a little bit. Okay, I have the darker color that has now been added to the color cup of the airbrush. And before I begin, I always like to take uh, a piece of index card and of course, <laughs> these index cards came from Walmart and this latest batch, they're as flimsy as paper. They're not even really index stock. But anyway, um, so I'm gonna spray a little bit just to first get the airbrush on, get it going here. And then I'm gonna start trying to do some thin lines. So I've got it down to where I can do some very thin lines 
um, as you can see right here. So uh, I know it's not coming into focus. I have, I do have the autofocus turned on, but uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't think it's going to work. Um, but anyway, there are some really thin lines here, which you may or may not be able to see. So I'm going to begin by painting the veining on the skin. And here's the first side. This is on the left. And um, I guess you can kind of see that uh, darker shade on there. And again, what I'm trying to do here is I'm just trying to hit the, the uppermost surface, sort of at the, at the peak of, of the veins, because I want a softer edge. But this is really a little too prominent, so I am going to end up fading these back. And uh, I'm going to do that with the base color before I do any shading or highlighting. Here is the base flesh. I'm going to add some of this back into the airbrush and come back and mist over the veining on both the hand and the head. I think that looks, I think that looks pretty good. <clears throat> I don't want to knock it out completely, but I don't want it to look too prominent. Okay, and um, here is the head with the veining ghosted back. And again, I don't know how uh, well this really shows up under this lighting. Uh, we may have to wait till we get into photography when uh, we can see this a little bit better. I may even have to come back and mist it again with the darker shade. I'm not sure yet until I get... The shadow color done, I may have to come back and forth a few times. I'm not sure yet. Sometimes it's hard to tell when you just have one color on this. And then you come back and you do an effect like this, and you have to wonder, because it's if you when you have a bust, when you have a character that has hair, many times it's better to paint the base flesh. And then before doing the highlighting and the shading, you paint the hair, and if the character not only has hair but has a beard or a mustache, sometimes when you paint the hair in, you can get a better sense of what's going to happen when you start laying in your other colors. So this is, this is a rather difficult one when it comes to painting because this is pretty much monotone, uh, except, of course, when it comes to doing any, any shading or highlighting. But there's no hair. There's no hair on the head. There's no facial hair. So when you're doing a monotone color like this, many times until you apply the other shading or any other color that'll break it up, it's kind of hard to really tell. So I think we're actually pretty good uh, with this, but I'm going to go ahead next and do the shading, which will just be a darker color of the base flesh and uh, then we'll do some highlighting which will be a lighter color of the base flesh okay so the shadow color is definitely a little bit lighter than the veining color okay and if you'll notice it's a rather thin consistency um, it runs down the cup pretty good, so this is pretty good for airbrushing. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you know uh, approximately what the viscosity should be for when you're airbrushing. And um, I didn't want to make the shadow color too dark because I'm trying to avoid having to go back and forth uh, from applying a darker shade and then coming back again uh, with the base color. This way I can move, hopefully, I can move directly from the shadow color here to doing the highlight color. Okay, um, I did the shadow color on the head itself as well as the hand. And again, I'm not sure if you're able to see this correctly. 
Um, I have an external monitor set up on a shelf up here that's a little bit out of view right now um, that I use. And when I look at the monitor, I can't really see it. Now, sometimes, though, when you get it into the editing program and you take a look at it on a preview monitor, sometimes you can see it a little bit better. But, of course, uh, as usual, the shadow color goes into all the recessed areas. So, above the brow, well, I should say below the brow, above the eyes, uh, the corners of the nose and the eye, the eyes, uh, the laugh lines, uh, above the chin... Uh, under the cheekbones, all of those areas are the areas that were uh, sprayed with the shadow color. And the little indentation here uh, in the forehead, inside of each ear, was uh, I airbrushed a darker shade, the shadow color in there. I'm I'm kind of thinking now, uh, and you know this is. This happens a lot, I, I think, <laughs> at least with me it does. Many times when you're using colors other than Caucasian flesh, this is what happens. You're sort of experimenting. And a lot of times, pretty much I guess the same way an artist would paint a picture, you end up having to mix different colors, different tones, to try to achieve the look you're actually going for. And I think that I'm, I'm looking at this right now and I'm thinking it needs something else. And I'm not 100% certain yet just what it needs. I'm thinking perhaps it needs another color. Even though I'm keeping the basic flesh, the pale green, I'm thinking that maybe I need a slightly darker shadow color. Then when I come back with the highlight, I can blend it better because if I feather that into the shadow color, then that may give me a more homogenized look as opposed to trying to stick within a certain narrow range of, of color or tones. And what I'm seeing here is that the green that I'm using, first off, it's too close to the veining color. So that's why I'm thinking I need some contrast. I need something other than just a darker shade of the base green. Okay, so what I ended up doing is since the shadow color, the original shadow color, seemed to be blending a little too much with the base tone. In other words, I used a darker green as the shadow color. Well, I wasn't really happy with the way that was looking. So I came back with a darker blue. And what I actually did for uh, with that blue was I airbrushed it, not completely over top of the green, but around it so that the green was still showing through as well as the blue. So I think that gave it a little bit more punch, a little bit, just a little bit more contrast. Now, the next phase is I have to come back and do something with these veins on the side of the head, each side of the head. Uh, I think I ended up ghosting them back a little too much. But I think what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to enhance them by using some pastel chalks and doing a darker tone next to the, the veins. Okay, I decided instead of using the pastel chalks, I came back with the same blue color that I used as the shadow color, and I'm airbrushing basically on the inside areas of the veins, along the raised areas. As I say, it may not show, it may not show right on camera, I'm not sure. Uh, I went in for a little tighter shot here, so you may be able to see it. It's just so subtle. I just don't want a very prominent uh, dark contrasty color. I want it just to be barely, barely visible. And so that's what I'm doing with that.
So I, I think this is much better than the pastel chalks because I can really control the density of the paint this way as opposed to trying to brush it on with uh, with pastel chalks. So I'm going to, uh, this, this side is pretty much done. Now I'm going to do this side and then the, uh, the other veins here and then uh, the ones on the hand. And then, um, then we can go to the highlight color. In addition to doing the veins, I also have gone ahead and I've also gone ahead and painted the lips and I've got the whites of the eyes, the white of the eyes blocked in. I have to go back and touch that up, but that'll be after I paint the rest of the eyes in there. Um, I've also got the shading done inside the nostrils. I did some additional shading onto the face here and there. Um, I, I just really felt like this, this monotone green needed something other than just keep adding different shades of green, which is why the lips are this color. It's kind of like a, almost like a reddish brown, um, and it has a little bit of a soft edge. So they're not that dominant so that it doesn't look like he's wearing lipstick, which is what I was trying to avoid. And, um, I've also painted, um, the uniform as well, so uh, or the, the the suit or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I used a, a blue-gray color, and of course it's supposed to be torn near the bottom, so I'm going to just tilt the camera down a little bit, and um, you can see how it's torn over here, so I used the gray on that. Now what I'm going to do for the, for the suit <clears throat> is I'm going to come back with a lighter shade of this color and just hit the highlights. I thought about dry brushing the whole thing, but I thought that might look a little too scruffy. So I may do a little bit of dry brushing along the stitching, but when it comes to these giant fold areas, I'd rather keep that a little on the smooth side. So I figure I can airbrush that. And of course the same thing on the wrist of the hand, because you can see his his, his suit uh, comes all the way down to his wrist, obviously, so I have to take care of that. Um, so we're definitely nearing completion here. And uh, so uh, I'm gonna get started with um, getting the eyes done and, uh, and then work on the suit. Okay, and uh, here is the finished piece. Um, I got the eyes painted, they're glossed over, everything has been sealed with clear coat. Uh, I did come back on the base and I did do a little bit of the powder blue in the shadow areas. Uh, the hand was finished off. Um, I went over the, uh, the claws and the little pointy things here on the backs of his hands or fingers. Uh, I started off with a brown dry brushed them with a kind of an ivory color and then I came back and airbrushed a darker tone at the base of each one and uh, then of course the uh, like I said the uh, the sleeve has been painted as well and uh, I think it turned out pretty good um, it was definitely uh, an interesting learning experience in using a base color in, uh, that was different from a Caucasian flesh color. So, uh, I mean, I've done Frankenstein figures before and I've used colors other than Caucasian flesh, but this was very, very stark. This was, um, I don't know, for some reason, this one just seemed to throw me for a loop. Um, and I maybe it was because of the scale. Uh, the scale and the amount of shadow color and highlight color along with the pale green. That may have been uh, what was throwing me off. But um, again, I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, I know that the eyes are very dark. That's because of the brow, but uh, they're there. Um, and uh, again, I think, it, I think it turned out pretty good. So that's it from me, Phil Lister. I hope you enjoyed this little episode of What's on the Workbench. I'm not sure right now what's going to be next. 
I've got a lot of work to do for other clients, so I'm going to be busy for quite a while. I will try to fit a video in where I can. I'm just not going to make any promises at this point. And besides, future videos are going to be not so much on figure models, but I'm going to start doing instructional models on car kits and possibly even some armor. So for you figure guys, sorry, but I need to diversify a little bit. So I've got quite a few car kits uh, that I plan to do in the future. So video, there will be videos done pertaining to car models and like I said, as well as armor or tanks. Speaking of tanks, I want to thank you for watching this video. Like I said, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned from this one as much as I did. So, so long for now.